So we're going to talk about communicating in a crisis for small and medium-sized businesses. And the most important step is, what is a crisis? That's well, not the most important step, but to start with today, what is a crisis? So it could be anything that disrupts significantly your ability to serve your customer, your ability to run your business. So for example, if you are a retail shop or a food service establishment and there's a water main break, that's a major disruption to your business. You're, you might be closed for a day. You might be closed for two days. It depends how long it takes the city to resolve that water main break and get water back to your building. That can be a crisis for your business. Uh, it's springtime in Oklahoma. Hail is coming. Tornadoes are coming. Rain is coming. Uh, any of those things, you know, if, you're, if your business, if your physical location sustains a hit from a tornado or if your house sustains a hit and you're a small business owner, that right there can absolutely be a crisis. Uh, perhaps you're a family-run business and maybe you're a sole proprietor, maybe there's a couple of members of your family that help out in that business and the head of your family undergoes a major illness. And that's going to disrupt how you're able to serve your customers because that's really the core of who you are as your business is your family. And so then you're dealing with a family illness and that's gonna cause a disruption as well. So those are just a few things to kind of picture in your mind of what we might be talking about in terms of crisis. So how do you plan ahead for one of those? First off, you anticipate that at some point it's going to happen. I think we're, we're all in Oklahoma. We were just talking back at our table about if we're all ready for storm season, you know, our, our emergency supply kits together. If you've got a shelter, is your shelter cleaned out? Are you ready to go? Well, is your business ready for storm season? Is your business ready for whatever crisis might come? So having a crisis communications plan, regardless of your business size, can be really important. It helps you plan ahead. So my advice is write a plan, share your plan, and then regularly review and revise your plan. Because if you just write a plan today, write a plan tomorrow, put it on a shelf, and that crisis doesn't hit your business for three more years, how helpful is that crisis communications plan gonna be for you? So review it, revise it. Write it, share it, review it, revise it. So again, in that plan, first anticipate what crisis might hit your business. What does that potentially look like for you? Think through some of those scenarios. They're not maybe fun to think about, but they're important to think about. Second thing in your crisis communications plan, pull all of your contact information together in one place. Your employees, your key stakeholders, if you have a board of directors, uh, your insurance provider, your IT provider if you have an outsourced IT provider, who's your website provider, suppliers, partners, customers, any of those people you might need to contact in the middle of a crisis, pull all that contact information into a plan. That's also where updating it regularly comes into play. If you were in a car accident, your laptop's in your car, your cell phone's in your car, they're both destroyed. You are obviously having to deal with a car accident and any injuries you might have sustained, and you don't have contact information because how many of us rely on what's in our cell phone, what's in our email history? So pull all that contact information together in one place in your plan. And then, once you've got it all put together, have your plan in multiple places. Have your plan in your office, have your plan in your house, have your plan with some employees, and then have it somewhere in the cloud so that even if the physical copies were either out of date or damaged, then you could still get to it. Uh, third thing to put in your, in your crisis communications plan is identify your company spokesperson and also kind of identify your chain of command. Who's in charge if something happens to the person who is in charge? Now, it's not, it's not legally binding. It's not, you know, for that kind of business succession, talk to a lawyer. But in terms of communication, know, know your chain of command. Know who's your spokesperson. Uh, if you do end up in a, in a media coverage scenario, who's, who's authorized in your company to talk to the media? Fourth, your notification procedures. So if something does happen on the crisis front, how do you notify your employees? How do you notify your stakeholders? How do those people expect to hear from you? I think we've all probably, somewhere in our lives, either as kids or as adults with kids, have gotten that phone call at five o'clock in the morning that says, hi, this is superintendent so-and-so with such and such school district, and we will not have school today due to inclement weather. Small businesses don't necessarily have that kind of phone blast technology. I mean, it's out there. If it's, if, depending on your company size, you might want to look into it. But you may not need that. You may just need a group text message. You may need a group email. But you need to know how you're going to notify your personnel 
and how you're going to notify your customers when there's an interruption to your business. And then those people also need to know what to expect from you in terms of notification. Your emergency protocols are the fifth thing that can go in your plan. So what, what does happen? And that kind of goes right there with notification procedures, but <coughs> what happens if something happens to your physical location? You know, do your employees report somewhere else to help you? Do your employees stay where they are until they've heard more from you? What if something happens to your physical location when your employees are physically there, but you are not? And so kind of your emergency protocols and what people need to do in that crisis can come into play in your crisis communication plan as well. And then one other thing that I would recommend that each of you do, depending on where you are in your business. So you may be the owner, you may be an employee, you may be a sole proprietor. Uh, if you are not the person in charge of things, then it's also probably just important to ask some questions about some of these things to make sure you understand your role. Uh, but redundancies are really important and multiple people having access to things. Does anybody have a Facebook page that someone previously in your company started and now nobody can get to it? <laughs> it happens all the time. I have clients that are fighting that battle right now where you know the previous or two people ago that was in charge that's the person who set up the facebook page and they didn't make anybody else an admin and now nobody can get into it and the facebook page is just hanging out neglected so think about the redundancies and who, who needs to have access to your business and to your business communication channels if you're a physical location and you're a sole proprietor whether it's your parent an adult child a good friend a cousin Get somebody else keys to that, to that location so that if something happened to you, you, they could still open your store and access the records they needed to access. Uh, if you have a Facebook page, website, email, any of that, especially again for sole proprietors and for super small businesses, make sure that more than one person has access to that because if a crisis hits, those are your, some of your key communications channels to use. You need to be able to post something on Facebook. You need to be able to get something out on email. You need to be able to put an alert up on your website. And if the crisis is for the only person who has access to that, then you're going to find yourself in some trouble because nobody else is going to know how to get to the Facebook page or the, um, any of that. So that's sort of your plan up front. Write that plan, share it, review it, and revise it. So make sure you've got contact information in there. Make sure you have company spokesperson identified your notification procedures, your emergency protocols, and then make sure pe multiple people have access to your communications channels. So when disaster actually strikes, what do you do? Well, I'm gonna say safety first. So assess, this, assess the situation, whatever it is, if it's physical disaster, if it's um, more of a kind of media issue that your company has gotten into, assess what's going on, make sure everybody's safe. And then second, remember that you have a plan and use that plan. So you've written your plan, it's physically there at your office or it's in the cloud somewhere and you're gonna pull that plan down and hopefully you reviewed it and revised it, revised it recently. And work through that plan. So communication's gonna be key. You need to notify your key stakeholders, you need to notify your employees, you need to make sure people who need information about the status of your business have that information. So if you're that retail shop and you're gonna be closed for two days, it's a Facebook post. And maybe if you have customers who are coming in that day for appointments or they're coming in that day uh, to consult on something that's coming up, then you know those might be your first phone call. I'm really sorry, our shop's closed today. We had a water main break. Is there somewhere else I can meet you to talk through this? Or is there some other way that we could help meet your needs? So uh, customer communication is gonna be key. Employee and stakeholder communication is key as well. So just keep those people in the loop. And I know I'm talking pretty broadly because there's a whole lot of ways that crisis might apply to your business, but really it's just about keeping that communication top of mind. And if it's a crisis that then impacts your business for two months or three months, make sure that you're regularly updating your customers. You know, if you're not at your primary physical location because a tornado hit it and the roof got blown off and it's flooded, but you've set up shop somewhere else, keep reminding your customers that you've, shut up, you've set up shop somewhere else for the time being so that they can still get a hold of you and they can still reach you. So another piece of crisis communication is the media. Raise your hand if you've ever been on camera or ever been interviewed by a local news source. Okay, so quite a, it's about half the room. I'm kind of impressed. Um, raise your hand if it was a good experience. 
Raise your hand if you've had a not so great experience. Okay, so fewer of those, good. Uh, it's a little unnerving and a little intimidating when somebody walks up to you with a microphone or a tape recorder or a camera and all of a sudden you're on the record and you're being asked about this situation that's happening. Hopefully you're not completely surprised and I'm gonna hope that no one in this room ever experiences that whole, you know, investigative journalism, cameras rolling, microphones rolling and they're like barreling through the door of your business to catch you in some, you know, crazy act. Uh, I hope none of you ever experience that. You don't want to be the person that they get on camera who's slammed the door in their face and locked the door and then you're in your office and every five minutes you're like peeking out the blinds to see if the news is still out there. Has anybody seen one of those stories? Because I've definitely seen them on TV. Um, so if possible, schedule a time for an interview. You know, if you get a, if you get a media inquiry, try and schedule a time, give yourself some prep time. Then sit down and anticipate the questions the media might ask you. What are, what are they gonna ask you about this crisis, this crisis that has happened? Uh, kind of write through those questions, come up with some talking points for yourself. Think in talking points when you're dealing with the media. Think in short sound bites. Because if they ask one question and you give them a three minute answer, your three minute answer doesn't fit on the news that night. So think in short phrases that are easy sound bites and start with the most important information. Be yourself when you're on camera or if you're in an interview, even if you're not on camera, if it's just for print, be yourself. Take a deep breath, relax, be who you are, understand that you know what you're talking about, you've prepared some talking points and then go from there. Be nice. Sometimes it's hard depending on what the story is. Uh, sometimes it's hard depending on the scenario, but everybody has a job to do, so you're trying to do yours and the media is trying to do their job as well. Be honest, but you also don't have to answer every single detail of every single question. So you've got your talking points prepped, you know what you want to talk about, the reporter may want to talk about some different stuff. It's to your advantage to be, to be honest in that scenario. Um, but then also, you know, if you don't have an answer for a question, it's okay to say, I don't have an answer, or we'll, we're still looking into that. Can I get back to you at a later time? The news runs pretty quickly. You know, they're trying to air it that night on the news, or they're trying to run it tomorrow in the newspaper. So they're going to want questions pretty quick. But if you truly don't have an answer to a question, don't try to, don't try to fudge it. Just, just be honest. You don't, have, you don't have an answer right now, but you'll try and get back to them as soon as you can. And then that's, that's really it with the media piece. And then Lawrence has given me the sign too that, uh, that I need to wrap up, which is great because that's pretty much my last point.